Hi everyone, uh, in this video we are going to discuss about DHCP relay. So D we discussed about DHCP in our previous video. So DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and uh, this is used when the client machines need an IP address for them to be part of some network. And for that we will have a dedicated machine known as DHCP server and when the DHCP server will receive a request from the client, that server machine will, will, uh, will send an IP address to be used by the client. Now this whole process actually it takes four messages. Our four messages are exchanged between the client and the DHCP server to, to get an IP address for the client. Now these messages are basically the discover message. And in this message, client uh, sends a DHCP discover message to find out about, find out the information about the DHCP server if this is available on the network. And when the DHCP server will receive that discover message, that server will send back an offer message to the client. And in that offer message, there will be an IP address which is supposed to be uh, given to the client. And the client in response to that offer message will send a request to the DHCP server so that that IP address should be assigned to that client and finally DHCP server will send an acknowledgement message and then this will be the final message by which the server will allow that client to use that particular IP address. So these are the four messages and this whole process sometimes is known as DORA. So DORA is coming from D-O-R-A. So discover, offer, request and acknowledge. So we saw these are the four messages and in this case this is assumed or this is supposed that the DHCP server is available on the local subnet or on the local area network so that when the client sends a broadcast or so discover message is sent in broadcast so when the client is sending the broadcast message it means that broadcast message can be received by the DHCP server. It means DHCP server can hear the request by the client. So they are in the same on the same network. So this is possible that this broadcast message is received by the DHCP server. Now the problem occurs when the DHCP server is not on the local subnet or is not on the local area network. It means the client that the uh, the broadcast message sent by the client will not be received at the DHCP server. In that case, what to do? So, for example, this, this is the scenario. In case DHCP server is not on the local network. So, for example, here and see that DHCP server is on this side of the router and our clients are on, for example, on this side of the network. So, the client actually connects two different routers. So, we can say, sorry, two different networks. So we can say this is maybe network one and this is network two. So when the client will send a broadcast message, that message will be received up to this point. So they are on the same subnet or they are on the local area network. So this broadcast message can only be received up to this point, but the DHCP server is here. So in this case, what can be done? So we are going to discuss this situation now. So the client sends a broadcast message and we discuss that this can only be received up to this point of the router. So now once the router has received that discover message at this point, and yes, this discover message will have a um, payload as well as the header and the header part as we discussed before as well so the client will use 0 0 0 and 0 as a source IP address and 255 255.255 will be used as the destination because this actually represents the broadcast address so with this one this interface this interface of the router has received the request but the DHCP server is on some other network which is on the other side of the router which is on this part so in this case for example in this case we have this interface which has received this discover message 
and this 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 interface will have an IP address. Now we can configure this interface of this router to help this message to help this message uh, to be forwarded to the DHCP server. So for that we can configure this interface of the router to help us so that this message can be forwarded to the actual DHCP server. So we want help from this interface and for that purpose we need to configure this interface and for configuration we have this command. So we will go to that particular interface using interface command. So I think this should be like interface in this interface mode. So in this interface, we issue this command and when we have issued this command, this interface will help us. And the command is just IP helper address. And here in the server IP, we give the IP address of the server machine where we want to forward our discover message. So we want to forward our this discover message to this DHCP server and we configure this one, this interface of the router using this command. Okay. So once we have configured this command on this particular interface of the router, let's see what happens. So then this router will basically forward that discovered message to the server machine. And for that, it will uh, again use the IP packet. And in that one, it will use, it will have uh, an header part as well as payload. So now we are talking about from this point up to DHCP server. So in the header part, it will use the source IP address as the IP address of this interface. So this interface IP address will be used as a source IP address. And then in the destination, this is 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. And in the destination, this is the IP address of this DHCP server. So now we have explicit source as well as IP address to forward the discover message to DHCP server. So at this point, the server has received the discover message. So now situation is same that now DHCP server has received the discover message and now DHCP server will send back to the client an offer message. So it will send an offer message, but this offer message will be sent to the router. And in this offer message, again, we will have header and header part, this DHCP server will use the source address as its own address and the destination address, it will use the routers IP address. So in this case, this in this way, this offer message will be received by this router. And now this router has to forward that offer message to the client. So in this case, this router will again generate a packet and this packet, we need a source and destination IP address. And in this case, the router will use the source address, the its own source address. So that will be 192.168.10.1. So this is sorry. So this is the source address. And in the destination, this will be 255.255.255.255. It means again the broadcast address will be used in the destination. So now this offer message will be sent to all these clients. But only the client. So only the client who actually made the request will receive this one because of this. Uh, uh, client hardware address there in the payload part so you can see only this will receive maybe if this is sent this uh, client sent a request so now this offer message has been received by the for example this uh, the required client now this client will send a request message again and in that request message it will use the 000 and 0 as a source IP address and 255 and 255 as the destination uh, IP address, it means this message will again be broadcast, it will be sent and to all these nodes on the on this subnet. So this will be received by this interface of the router. And as we discussed previously, now this router will forward that request message to the DHCP server. And in the source part and the destination part, 
this will be the IP address. So the source IP address will be the router IP address and the destination IP address will be the DHCP server IP address. And this way, this request message will be uh, forwarded to DHCP server. And once DHCP server has received that request message, it will send back an acknowledgement message. But this acknowledgement message will be sent to the router and then route and DHCP server will use its own IP address as the source IP address. And for the destination IP address, it will use the router's IP address. And when router, so you can see this is the destination IP address that is the router's IP address. And now this router will just forward that acknowledgement message or acknowledge message to the client. So the router will use its own IP address as the source IP address and the destination it will use the broadcast address because still the client does not have any IP address. So now this will be forwarded to all the, all the clients on this side. All of them will receive but only intended are the required client will process it because of this uh, client ID. So client ID means in the payload part, when this user originally sent the message, it included its identification. So it actually add, added the client hardware address there, client hardware address. And that is basically only from this user. So only it means only this user will process this acknowledge message and in this way this user will be assigned an IP address after these four messages. So it means discover and then offer request and acknowledgement message. After this exchange of these four messages, this client will have an IP address and then and then this user can be once this user has an IP address, this user can send and receive the data from the network. And of course, uh, this DHCP server will have a pool of IP address and this DHCP server can also be configured to not only send the IP address and the subnet bus, but this DHCP server can be configured to forward these default gateway information as well as DNS server information. This is the uh, end for this video, but the main thing was that now there is some router who is forwarding this request to the DHCP server. Now this router is basically is called the relay. So this is the we call as DHCP relay. So in this case, this is the DHCP relay, which is going to forward or which is going to relay the message received from this client to the actual DHCP server. So this was some uh, introduction about DHCP relay and we can also demonstrate the same idea in Cisco Packet Tracer as well. So let's move to Cisco Packet Tracer to see how we can configure the same scenario in Cisco Packet Tracer. So thank you. Thank you for your time and hope to see you in, in the video on Cisco Packet Tracer.